Welcome back. Let's jump right into this. There's a lot of information to cover. And uh, bear with me if it seems to be a little scattered uh, at moments. I'm going to be doing a lot of editing on the fly, so to speak. Uh, there's just a lot of information here. Uh, it's, it's with a heavier heart more than anything else that I bring this information. Let me preface this by saying I have... Um, I have attempted to get in touch with Paul Washer personally over the course of the last two years at least. Uh, I've been unsuccessful in those attempts. Um, I did speak with Kevin Height from Heart Cry Missionary Society on two separate occasions for an extended period of time and shared with him all of this information that was ultimately dismissed. Uh, which isn't surprising given the fact that uh, Mr. Height is apparently good friends and hunting buddies with J.D. Hall, whom uh, was recently exposed on this channel as well and responded in identical fashion with personal favoritism rather than biblical conformity. A heavy heart because uh, for quite some time uh, I did look up to Paul Washer, uh, he is uh, a man that I recommended to people, somebody that I learned a lot from, somebody that I perceived to have a special measure of the grace of God, and somebody who uh, seemed genuinely passionate about uh, what he was doing. And, uh, and as such, I'm all the more baffled by what I'm seeing, because a man that was once, uh, really that gained notoriety as a result of his quote, shocking youth message in which he rebuked a group of young students in front of him who were laughing. And he said, I don't know why you're laughing. I'm talking about you. A guy that is said to have thrown a Bible down the aisle of the church at one point and said, this is what you think of God's word? Take it. A guy that had to have an ambulance called for him because he was having a nervous breakdown because the people were questioning the veracity of scripture. For all of that, to see what I'm seeing now and what I'm going to share with you now and what I saw the early signs of uh, as early as a couple of years ago uh, is thoroughly disappointing. Uh, it's, it's no longer signs. It's no longer hints. Um, Paul Washer has been uh, his silence concerning John Piper for starters over the last few years has been deafening as somebody that has recommended him unwaveringly in the face of John Piper's partnerships with Rick Warren, the Passion Conference, Hillsong, Carl Lentz, Louis Giglio, etc., that Paul Washer has not repudiated those endorsements was troubling enough. But as you're going to see, it's much worse than that, much worse. But I preface all this by saying uh, it's thoroughly disappointing for me that this has to be done because you know some people have accused me of just having some vendetta or just being just this rogue anti-calvinist all of these things are just without merit um what i'm saying is it true and that's a phrase that paul washer will often use what i'm saying is it true that's all you need to ask yourself right now and since there's a ton of information to cover. Let's jump right into it. Um, we are going to start here. Um, this is a conference, cross-conference, slated for January of 2019 in Louisville, Kentucky. Another youth-led, youth, -led, youth uh, well, not so much youth-led, but youth-driven uh, conference for 18 to 25-year-olds, very much in line with Hillsong conferences and the Passion Conference the SEND conference, the SEEDS conference. Uh, it's, there's so many conferences, I can't keep track of them at this point. And I mean literally dozens and dozens of conferences, the vast majority of which are tailored to this age range right here. It's a, it's a youth-guided, uh, youth, youth-driven conference environment that we find ourselves in today. So Paul Washer will be joining in partnership in ministry with uh, these individuals here. There's some others uh, that will be there as well. And um, we're going to start 
here. There's so much to cover, even just here. Kevin DeYoung, Thibidi Anabwile, or Tabidi, however you say it. Her real name is Ron Brown, I believe. David Platt, Triple E, and of course, John Piper. So these are who Paul Washer is now aligning himself with, partnering with, and endorsing in conferences, speaking together. Um, and this is this is slated for the future. Uh, though, as I just mentioned, he has been an unwavering supporter of John Piper for um, quite some time. I want to preface this by by looking to First uh, Samuel. Um, chapter three. This uh, this passage uh, works in tandem with Second uh, John verses nine through eleven. Second um, John verses nine through eleven says that if anybody comes to you and does not bring the doctrine of Christ, don't welcome him into your home. Don't even greet him. Uh, to even greet such a one, or to bid give him any encouragement is to be a partaker in his evil deeds, to share in his evil deeds in the immediate context. They are uh, Paul has just addressed the heresy, the Gnostic heresy of docetism. Uh, however, to say that uh, this principle is relegated to docetism alone is not only absurd on the face of it, but it is absurd according to um, historical biblical commentators. Uh, some of which would include Martin Lloyd Jones, Charles Spurgeon, though not not uh, commentators exclusively per se, uh, Matthew Henry, uh, etc. If anybody comes to you bringing aberrant false doctrine and you welcome that person in and you greet them and you bid them Godspeed as a uh, partner in ministry, you are sharing in their evil deeds. Now, uh, real quick, I'm going to read. From second, uh, second, sorry, First Samuel chapter three, and uh, down in verse thirteen, uh, Eli had uh, wicked sons, and um, Eli, though he confronted his sons, did nothing to restrain their wickedness. And here's what the the Lord says to Samuel: Behold, I will do something. Starting in verse eleven, in Israel, at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end, for I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows, because his sons made themselves vile, and he did not restrain them. Eli's sons were guilty of stealing sacrifices, having sex with women at the temple entrance, and Eli knew of it. He even confronted them earlier in 1 Samuel, and he asked them why they were doing this, why they were bringing reproach upon his name and the priesthood. Uh, yet he stopped short of doing anything effect effective to stop it. Now, um, first we're going to look at, uh, let me see which one this is. This is Alexander McLaren commentary. I chose Alexander McLaren uh, in part uh, because what he says is true here. Uh, and also because this is uh, one of Paul Washer's personal influences and personal heroes. Uh, here's his commentary on, on this verse in particular. The sin was mainly the sons, but the guilt was largely the fathers. We may learn how cruel paternal laxity is and how fatal mischief may be done by neglect of the plain duty of restraining children. He who tolerates evil, which, is, which it is his province to suppress, is an accomplice, and the blood of the doers is red on his hands. Listen again. He makes a specific statement about children, and then he makes a general statement. He who tolerates evil, which it is his province to suppress, is an accomplice. Toleration of evil, mere toleration, is accompliceship. I think that's a word. And the blood of the doers is red on his hands. 
uh, believe this is John Wesley's, uh, sorry, this is probably Matthew Henry. Uh, John Wesley said exactly the same thing, though. Uh, here's Matthew Henry's commentary. Eli's sons, starting down here, Eli's sons made light of God and made his offerings vile in the people's eyes. But the shame returned into their own bosom. They made themselves vile. Those that do not restrain the sins of others when it is in the power of their hand to do it make themselves partakers of the guilt and will be charged as accessories. Those in authority will have a great deal to answer for if they make not the sword they bear a terror to evil workers. John Wesley said the same thing. Um, this is... Uh, You'll be hard-pressed to find a, a commentator that doesn't say exactly this. One who has the power to restrain evil and doesn't do it becomes an accomplice. Uh, this is effectively what Second John 11 says. Same exact thing. Whoever greets him, whoever bids him Godspeed, is a sharer, a partaker in his evil works. So the question then becomes, what's wrong with these people? Now, some of you may know who these people are. Others of you may not. Now, Paul Washer is, I would venture to say, probably uh, the most well-known in conservative camps who uh, tend to take their Bible seriously. Hence the heavy-heartedness here. So let's just start with Kevin DeYoung, who is also a friend of uh, John MacArthur's and just spoke at the together for the gospel conference with him a uh, mere a few days ago, uh, maybe a week ago at this point, in uh, in Kentucky. Al Muller's together for the gospel conference, uh, Kevin DeYoung, there with John MacArthur. Well, let's take a look at um, who Kevin DeYoung is and what he participates in. Kevin DeYoung uh, was uh, he's the I believe he's the senior pastor here of Christ Covenant Church, and they had a Bethlehem Conference for Pastors uh, just earlier this year. Uh, John Piper was there, as well as some others, including Francis Chan. Francis Chan was invited by Kevin DeYoung to join him on stage, and here's some words. Could resonate with what Francis was saying in the the battle with your own flesh, and coming to preach at a conference like this, and you see, I'm going after Francis. The thing you know is that guy's not usually low energy, so, um, and I think he's, he's, he's stepped back for just a moment and will be out, but I did want to thank him publicly for praying for me. That's very moving. You, you realize as a Christian, it is one of the greatest gifts you can give to anyone to pray for them. Not just to say... We'll just stop it there for now. Anyway, Francis was invited by Kevin. Kevin approves of Francis. He even acknowledges what a, what a weighty task it is to speak after Francis and how grateful he is to have him there and for his prayers, etc. Again, these men are united in their alliance and partnership in um, religious enterprise here. Keep 2 Corinthians 6.14 in mind as well. So for those of you who don't know who Francis Chan is or what he does or what he supports, um, here is uh, Francis Chan at Louis Giglio's Passion Conference. This was 2017's Passion Conference. He also spoke this year at uh, 2018 Passion Conference. Francis Chan, there's uh, Hillsong United's Christine Kane, uh, self-professed pastrix from the Hillsong movement. Uh, Beth Moore. Southern Baptist Convention Darling, who is uh, uh, notably partnered with uh, Francis Chan, John Piper, Lecrae, and Louis Giglio in 2012 doing Lectio Divina on stage at the same Passion Conference. Louis Giglio took a trip to the Vatican with his wife Shelley Giglio and greeted the Pope with a kiss, the same Pope that um, all of the Reformers, right down through to Charles Spurgeon, would say it was the Antichrist. That's who Louis Giglio is. That's who Francis Chan 
is a partner with. Uh, of course, Hillsong United also sings music at the Passion Conference along with the Passion Band and other heretic embracers like David Crowder, Matt Redman, and more. It's Kristen Stanfield, Christy Knuckles, etc. So that's who Francis Chan is. Francis Chan is also a good friend of Mike Bickle and the IHOP movement out of Kansas City. Mike Bickle, part of the famed Kansas City Prophets in the early 90s, affiliated with the deranged Toronto Blessing, and great friends with people like Bill Johnson and Lou Engel. Right next to Francis here is Reinhard Bonnke, who, uh, among other things, says he can raise dead people. He's made this claim with no evidence. I'm not saying the Lord can't do it. I'm saying he says it so flippantly, it's almost comical. Uh, he also officiated Benny Hinn's second wedding. This is who Reinhard Bonnke is. Mike Bickle is a proven false prophet. And uh, time would fail us to get into all the details of, of all these people. Uh, but just so you have a little background as to who Mike Bickle is and what Francis Chan is all about, um, at this exact conference here, here's Mike Bickle uh, giving a, a pre-address to the conference. Hello, my name is Mike Bickle. I'm the director of the International House of Prayer, and I'm right here with Keith Major. And Keith, you're hosting and sponsoring our Catholic ecumenical track at One Thing, the Young Adult Conference. Mm -hmm. We're expecting thousands of young people from all around. So tell us what's on your heart, because we're so excited to have you here. What an honor and what a blessing that you guys are doing this together and coming to join with us in this building. Well, I learned so much from you the six and a half years I was on staff. And I just want to share this experience with my Catholic friends. So I like to thank you for even hosting, letting us come in to your conference and, 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 and learn from you because we have so much to learn from what you're doing with the prayer Well, And we have so much to learn from all over the body of Christ. Catholics, charismatics, non-charismatics, denominations, anyone who loves Jesus. That's why we're hosting an ecumenical track or that's why actually you're the one leading it. And I so appreciate you doing that because if you love Jesus and the word of God, Man, we're going on the same direction together before the Lord, and so we love that. Thank yeah. you. Going on the same direction together, I mean, just overtly, this video is titled Catholic Ecumenical Track, and this, um, out of his own mouth, this is the whole objective. This man, apparently now a Catholic, at the very least uh, an extreme Catholic sympathizer, was on staff prior with Mike Bickle, the heretic, for six years. And Mike Bickle is thrilled to have him leading a Catholic ecumenical track because, listen, we're all part of the same body. We're all going in one direction. This is without question the spirit of Antichrist. You cannot see this any other way. You need to get this clear. There, the, 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 the very word Protestant has in it is, is predicated upon the notion of protesting all that Catholicism stands for, all that Rome stands for. It was not a light charge when Martin Luther said the Pope was an, an Antichrist, if not the Antichrist. Matthew Henry said the same thing. Charles Spurgeon said the same thing. Cotton Mather said the same thing. All of these people, everybody throughout history within the Protestant uh, reformers and sub-reformers, unanimously conceded that the Pope and or the papacy was in fact the Antichrist. And no wonder there's not a more clear uh, description or uh, representation of all that Antichrist embodies than the papacy itself. And Mike Bickle is enthralled and, and just loving the fact that they are sponsoring a Catholic ecumenical track at the One Thing conference that Francis Chan uh, was invited to. This was two years after his first invitation to the uh, IHOP conference here called One Thing in which he was warned by several people not to go. A lot of people used to hear true things from Francis Chan. They said, don't go. Uh, Mike Bickle is a heretic. He's an ecumenical heretic and a proven false prophet. Don't go. Francis Chan boldly disregarded that, went, received some more rebuke, and then he went back. He went back, and here is what he says at the very conference um, that Mike Bickle was just speaking of. I spoke here a couple years ago and I, I shared with you how I got so much flack from so many people saying, why would you go there? Um, they are creepy. 
Uh, they are this, they are that, and just all these essays. And I read through almost all of them just going, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I, I agree with you on this. And so I've been encouraged by many people, okay, if you go back this time, would you please not publicly affirm them? <laughs> I just got to say, man, I still love Mike Bickle. I, I do. I, I hear comments like, you know, oh, I know Mike loves Jesus. I know he's got the spirit of God, but, and I'm like, wait, what, what do you mean, but? This is the complete and utter lack of discretion that uh, Francis Chan is operating with. He was warned. He went. He saw. He came back. He was re-warned. They said, if you go again, please don't publicly affirm them. He disregards all of that, doubles down, and says, I still love the man. I still love him. Mike Bickle, the one who's elated to have a Catholic ecumenical track sponsored at his church because we're all on the same team. This is the mindset of Rick Warren. This is the mindset of the spirit of Antichrist that Francis Chan can't get enough of. All of these people are steeped in it. And Kevin DeYoung loves Francis Chan, invited him to speak with him and John Piper. Huge fan of Francis Chan. Let's continue. Thabiti Anabwile or Tabidi Anabwile, recently spoke at the, uh, he's a, a council member of the Gospel Coalition, as is Kevin DeYoung here. Um, the Gospel Coalition has been rightly assessed by uh, many, even people I disagree with, such as Pulpit and Penn, uh, because of their glaring hypocrisy. But even broken clocks get it right from time to time. The uh, Gospel Coalition has been rightly assessed as a uh, more of a political Marxist organization than a religious one. Um, you're looking at three council members right here. John Piper, Th Thabiti Anabwile, Kevin DeYoung. Uh, David Platt might be, but don't quote me on that. But for sure, these three are. Thabiti, a few days ago, uh, during their MLK, Martin Luther King 50 tribute, um, basically stated that um, all white people were responsible for the death of Martin Luther King. Um, his real name is Ron Brown, I believe it is, or Rob Brown, one of the two, maybe Ron. Uh, this isn't his real name. He's something of a black nationalist, and he has made some pretty racially charged comments uh, toward white people, uh, lest some of you... Um, pull a bag over your head. Uh, racism exists in all different races. And Thabiti Anabwile uh, has pulled no punches in saying that um, all white people basically need to repent for their complicity uh, in the death of Martin Luther King. Uh, there's been a ton of controversy surrounding him over the past week concerning these specific statements. Uh, but he's... He's kind of got a habit of controversy and generally crazy statements. He says here, um, let the hate begin, but if choice is between Clinton and Trump, I'm voting Clinton. I'll go back to not voting when this man is defeated. Okay. So he, uh, he made no uh, light statements about his support of Hillary Clinton. And here's what he did. This is at the Gospel Coalition website, uh, of which he is a council member. And you can see this is under his, uh, this is his column. This is his specific column in June of 2016. What he did was, he is the senior pastor at Anna Cosita River Church here. He got uh, one of his leaders, Nick Rodriguez, uh, to write an article under his section here. Uh, uh, says, um, they do not represent the views of Anacosita Church or the Gospel Coalition. Now, they put this disclaimer in here um, th that changes nothing. Um, the views expressed here are Nick's. 
Well, if, if really the Gospel Coalition was that vehemently opposed to them, they wouldn't have allowed them to be posted. And, of course, um, given that Tabidi is the senior pastor of this church, they clearly represent and reflect his views because that's exactly what he said. Um, and he says here, I'm writing this post in Tabidi's space to both add my voice to his and to make a claim that goes a little further. I think that the evangelical leaders in particular, conservative evangelical leaders, need to use all the influence God has given them to encourage thinking Christians to vote for Hillary Clinton. No dithering, no qualifications. The stakes are simply too high. So Thabiti allowed his leader, uh, a leader, co-leader with him at his church, to use his column here at the Gospel Coalition to write this. And then they put this nonsensical uh, disclaimer in here that says, um, they do not represent the views of the church, they're solely his own, or the Gospel Coalition. Well, that's just simply nonsense. Um, speaking out both sides of your mouth effectively, um, you can say, you know, it's, it's like somebody getting caught shoplifting and they tell the officer, I'm not stealing. Well, yes, you are. Your words are hollow. The act uh, outweighs what your words um, are saying. So, Tabidi Anabwile and his co-leader Nick here, uh, th now let me just uh, say this, um, I, I don't think that Donald Trump is a Christian man any more than I think George Bush or Barack Obama were Christian men. I think they are nominally Christian for the sake of influence. Now, I hope the man gets saved, but uh, you'd be lying to yourself if you thought that uh, Donald Trump was, you know, a, a pillar of godly living, uh, which he's clearly not. That said, this woman right here is a pillar of overt satanic living. That's the best thing I can say about her. Um, the witch of Endor would probably be put to shame by this devil in front of you. So... Though Donald Trump is not a Christian man, the things that he espouses are more in line with um, a, a more conducive to uh, Christian liberties and a Christian way of life than uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, the uh, promoter of, you know, abortion. She promotes the murder of babies. Um, let's just start with that. We don't need to get into a deep political discussion here. But the fact that these men uh, took the social justice warrior approach uh, to make this uh, some race thing, they took the media's approach and basically said Trump is a racist, therefore uh, stakes are too high, we need to vote for Hillary. Now that's ridiculous. So I don't think Donald Trump's a, a Christian. Um, however, I think that um, this woman uh, could rightly be confused with the Witch of Endor. So that's who Thabiti Anabwile is. He's a black nationalist who thinks white people are responsible, all white people. We are all complicit in the death of Martin Luther King, and we need to uh, repent on behalf of our ancestors and uh, vote for Hillary Clinton. That's uh, Thabiti Anabwile. Uh, then we have up here David Platt. David Platt is a good friend of Francis Chan, who we just showcased over here, loving Mike Bickle. Can't get enough love of Mike Bickle. David Platt has been Francis Chan's friend and promoter and partner in ministry for years. Uh, there are just a few pictures of them together at various functions and occasions. They are good friends. This is nothing new. Very good friends. There's a book right here, Multiply. This is at Radical.net. This is David Platt's own website. He wrote a book, I believe, called Radical some years ago. Resources from David Platt right here. The book called Multiply by Francis Chan with a forward from David Platt. So David Platt and Francis Chan are still producing articles together, uh, books together, uh, seminars, conferences, etc. Uh, they are good friends. I did uh, cover some of this on a, a previous video. Um, this is what David Platt has been doing for some time. Uh, now, uh, let's jump over here to Trip Lee. Trip Lee is a former uh, reformed Christian rapper uh, who is part of Reach Records with uh, another Christian rapper named Lecrae, who's pretty popular. Paul Washer some years ago even said that Lecrae and Tripoli were his friends. Apparently their friendship is still quite intact. 
And um, though capable of espousing tenets of orthodoxy, uh, Trip Lee is a full-blown uh, partner and promoter of Jesus Culture and Hillsong United. Uh, here's uh, a conference taking place this September in which Trip Lee will be partnering with Jesus Culture right here. And Lauren Daigle and some of these other people, Toby Mack. Uh, so Jesus Culture, who is Jesus Culture? For those of you that don't know, they are the music ministry, I use the term ministry very loosely here, of Bethel Church in Redding, California. Bethel Church is led by Bill Johnson, who was good friends, still is good friends with Mike Bickle, and part of the same uh, heretical Kansas City Prophets and the deranged Toronto Blessing. Uh, here's a little excerpt from... Uh, I'm Dane Liebscher, and I'm here with Bill Johnson, our senior pastor, author, teacher, preacher, all-around good guy. One of our senior associates was just praying like, Lord, why'd you choose Redding? Right. And the Lord said, I didn't choose, he said, I didn't choose Redding, I chose Bill. Oh, wow. And so sometimes I think, like, it doesn't matter what city, man, the Lord chooses, you know, the Lord chooses yeah. people. And the Lord told me, bring in the fathers and mothers. Wow. So I mean, we're bringing in, like, Reinhard Bonnke, Cindy wow. Jacobs, Lou wow. Engel, Bill wow. Johnson. You're responsible. All heretics. For movements, the church, the body of Christ. And we, in, in this journey, we've had the Lord show up and do a, a number of amazing things. It would be about 15 or maybe 14 years ago, somewhere in that area, 14 years ago probably, the feathers started just appearing and falling in meetings. And then they started falling in our homes and in restaurants and things like that, just unusual things, so, you know. It, there are signs that make you wonder. There, and we'll have wind that will gust of wind that I'll get hit with, and I mean not imaginary things, you know. <clears throat> and uh, we've had gold dust appear in people's hands for years. We, I don't ever talk about it, but frequently during worship, we actually had it today. Benny and I both saw gold will start falling during worship. This time, I think it started falling during our prayer time, and we'll just see it just drop like rain, and uh, and. I mean, we just, you, you can't invite God into the house and not have something outside of your box happen. Glory cloud just came and just started hovering somewhere over the platform. I'm not sure where that one was, but there's this cloud. It was calm. It's hard to explain. It looks like smoke, looks like dust, and when you get close, it's like gold. But it happened at such a key moment, there's no way to question that it was the Lord. Yeah, great question. Uh, what about using the Bible? Um, you can watch a full clip here. Jesus Culture, the Next Generation of Heretics. There's a whole 40-minute presentation about who they are. Uh, Bill Johnson, uh, there's only two options here with Bill Johnson. Uh, he is either deceiving people by the power of Satan, demonically inspired, or he's a legitimate crazy person. Those are the only two options. He either knows what he's doing and he's lying and deceiving people on person or he's actually crazy because the things that he talks about are at, uh, utterly insane. Gold dust just falling from the sky and feathers appearing in our homes. And, and notice how flippantly he says these things. I'm not denying the possibility of miracles, but um, rarely... If ever, do people respond with such a cavalier attitude toward the uh, miracles happening? Yeah, you know, oh, we, a glory cloud just appeared. Yeah, I don't really talk about it. You know, it's hard to... This guy's a, this guy's a whack job. Uh, except I don't think it's that. I think he's just a deceiver. He knows he's lying. And he knows people will eat it up. This is the leader of Jesus Culture Music. Jesus Culture and Trip Lee partnering right here. Nothing new for them, um, but we'll jump into some more of that in just a, well, here, we'll jump over here. Outcry Tour. This was from 2015. Hillsong United, Jesus Culture, Kari Job, David Crowder, Passion Band, Bethel Music from uh, both Bethel and Jesus Culture, are both from Bethel Church. They just have two different bands. Lauren Daigle, uh, who you can see is here with Trip Lee as well. Um, and Trip Lee, 
Nick Hall. This is the guy that uh, organized the Fill the Mall event in Washington, D.C. in 2016. Took a trip to the Vatican, brought Pope Francis a shirt that said Together on it. They took pictures, and then he had Pope Francis delivering the opening message. Among other people that spoke at this ecumenical Antichrist-sponsored event were Ravi Zacharias, Josh McDowell, uh, Nabil Qureshi, who has uh, since passed, unfortunately, uh, and several people who should have known better. But this, these, all these people, they are all one. They're all one. They're all of the same mind. They're all of the same accord. Tripoli, Jesus Culture, Hillsong United, Bethel Music, Nick Hall. Um, here's Tripoli at another conference coming up in just a couple months. Freedom Conference 2018. Here's Trip Lee. He's a, he's a, he doesn't just sing anymore. He's a singer slash speaker. He's been doing the rounds and all the conferences. And he's partnering here with uh, John Gray. John Gray. Who is John Gray? Trip Lee's partner in crime here. John Gray. What's it like being the first black pastor at Joel Osteen's megachurch in Texas? That's who John Gray is. There's John Gray sitting down with Oprah on Super Soul Sunday, as she calls it, um, talking about being a uh, the first black pastor at Joel Osteen's church. He has since, I believe, just recently left Joel Osteen's church, uh, not over any uh, points of disfellowship, uh, but just to start his own mega church. They're still closely aligned, and he still teaches there, I believe, bi-monthly. So he is a pastor, co-pastor, co-elder with Joel Osteen, none other than uh, motivational speaking Joel Osteen. Gospel deprived Joel Osteen. That's who John Gray is. Uh, there they are, all hanging out. Joel and John and Victoria Osteen. That's who Trip Lee is partners with. That's the discretion uh, that Trip Lee exercises, partnering with, not suppressing, not rebuking, not shunning, not convincing with all authority, but partnering in ministry with a heretic, a deceiver, and a spreader of lies. That's what Trip Lee is immersed in. Uh, here's Trip Lee. Uh, the Justice Conference, I believe this was held at Bill Hybels, Willow Creek Church. Bill Hybels, uh, partner with Rick Warren and recently dealing with, I believe, some kind of sexual scandal. Big surprise there. Uh, Trip Lee, in partnership with Ann Voskamp, who, along with uh, Tony Campolo, has made some comments, some sexually charged comments about our relationship with God and how we're supposed to be sexually intimate with God. Uh, they've made some very disturbing comments on that front. Amongst other things, she is a part of the emergent church, very mystic and thoroughly unbiblical. Hillsong United out of Brian Houston's church. There's his son, Joel Houston, over here. We'll be speaking at the same conference, Trip Lee as we've already pretty clearly established, is good friends with them and has been for quite some time. From 2015 right on through to today, uh, Tripoli is partners with and supports Jesus Culture, headed by the crazy Bill Johnson and uh, people like John Gray, who are uh, partners with Joel Osteen. But let's continue. Uh, this is just, this is a video of, this is Trip Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, Trip Lee! Ladies and gentlemen, Trip Lee! Let me just say that sounds are not sinful in and of themselves. That would be a silly um, statement to make. That said, his... Uh, his full-fledged uh, desire to conform to everything worldly is pretty apparent. David Crowder. So anyway, uh, David Crowder, Hillsong, Jesus Culture, this is just some... Uh, some excerpts from their outcry tour. Um, who we got here? Oh, yeah. Francis Chan, John Piper, Louis Giglio. Louis Giglio. Um, John Piper is 
our last guy here on the list. And John Piper has um, aligned himself with all these same people. Heretic after heretic. There was David Crowder, partner with, uh, and, and Rat Met, Matt Redman, Chris Tomlin. All of these guys are partners with not only Hillsong, but Bill Johnson's Jesus Culture. Louis Giglio, the Pope Kisser, uh, promoter of Carl Lentz of Hillsong Church, of course. Uh, Levi Lusco of Skull Church, a good friend of Stephen Furtick and uh, and Carl Lentz as well. Uh, John Piper has been a part of the Passion Conferences for, gosh, the last decade pretty consistently, and he's been a good friend of Louis Giglio for about the last 20 years. Uh, amongst other things, John Piper went on a campaign defending Rick Warren, invited him to the Desiring God Conference in 2010, has never repudiated that endorsement and went on to speak with him and uh, affirm him four times over, five times over. And here's just some of what he said. I do think he's deeply theological. Rick Warren. He's a brilliant man. Wouldn't have the church he does or the peace plan or uh, all the influence he does. And, of course, the greatest sentence in the Purpose Driven Life is the first one, isn't it? It's not about you. It's about God, the glory of God. So I don't think he's emergent. At root, I think he is theological and doctrinal and sound. God is sovereign and central over all of life. I, I think Rick Warren meant it when he began the Purpose Driven Life. So he goes on to really um, defend, bolster a strong defense of Rick Warren. He thinks he's theological and doctrinal and sound. Rick Warren, a uh, man who is as ecumenical, if not more so, than Mike Bickle, a man who says if you love Pope Francis, you'll love Jesus, a man who uh, took a trip to the Vatican with N.T. Wright and Russell Moore and spoke on marriage and the family, thanked the Pope over and over for his graciousness and, oh, how he loved him. Um, pope Francis, our Pope, he calls him, Rick Warren does. This is who John Piper thinks is theological and doctrinal and sound. This is John Piper speaking at the Passion Conference this year um, with Louis Giglio, who, um, who also is very fond of the Pope. Uh, Louis Giglio, also friends with John Gray, Joel Osteen's uh, co-pastor. So, you know, back to, uh, uh, where is it here? There's uh, Louis Giglio and John Piper, Francis Chan, uh, you know, Francis Chan is, is affirming Mike Bickle and the whole New Apostolic Reformation. Uh, uh, Louis Giglio is affirming John Gray, Carl Lentz, Hillsong United, etc. And so is John Piper. And um, Paul Washer is partnering with him. Paul Washer has been an outspoken proponent of John Piper for years, as I've said. Um but there's Louis Giglio and John Gray. This well runs deep. Uh, I am barely scratching the surface, and I'm trying to contain myself. There is so much to discuss here, and I'm currently in the process of editing about a three-hour expose covering much of this, and I've been working on this for a couple of years. Um, Hillsong. Dot com Hillsong Australia, Ravi Zacharias International Apologetic Symposium. Yes, Ravi Zacharias is a good friend of the Hillsong movement, and Rick Warren as well. Last year he spoke at Rick Warren's Saddleback Church and said, I'm pleased to be with my friend Rick Warren at one of the most influential churches in our modern era. Uh, just a gushing, um, a glowing recommendation of Rick Warren and all that Saddleback and its purpose-driven ecumenism stands for. That is the fruit that Ravi Zacharias is bearing these days. You will know them by their fruit, not by their mere hollow words, but by their fruit. So there's Ravi Zacharias partnering with Hillsong United, all of this. Ravi Zacharias. Well, here's the Sing Conference in 2018, and who do we got here? John Piper's there. Ravi Zacharias is there. Oh, John MacArthur's there. Who else? Tim Keller, founder of the Gospel Coalition and Marxist. And oh, who do you have here? Trip Lee. Yep, there you go. Trip Lee. It's not just Paul Washer. It's John MacArthur just as well. Uh, John MacArthur, as I said, just spoke at the uh, Together for the Gospel Conference with Kevin DeYoung and uh, John Piper as well. But here he will be partnering with Trip Lee, Tim Keller, 
And uh, Ravi Zacharias, no official position on Catholicism, embraces Hillsong. John Piper uh, just embraces pretty much anything these days. But because uh, these men have gray hair and had a reputation of being sound at one time, people threw discernment right out the window and decided to take at face value everything they said and did. They got a free pass, and perhaps nobody more so than John MacArthur. And I will remind you of the verse we started with. Um, Those in authority will have a great deal to answer for if they make not the sword they bear a terror to evil workers. Now, Paul Washer can't stop John Piper, Trip Lee, or any of these people from speaking at a conference. But he can stop himself from speaking at this conference. He can stop himself from endorsing them. He can, and John MacArthur can, stop putting their stamp of approval on what is clearly egregious error. The fact that he is not only not publicly rebuking them, because that's also his responsibility, even Eli did that and that wasn't good enough. Paul Washer at the very least, should be saying, I repudiate any and all endorsement I ever gave of John Piper, and until or unless he repents, I cannot and will not recommend him because let God be true and every man a liar. Unfortunately, Paul Washer seems to have gone into the ways of error and is now uh, succumb to the trap of celebrity that uh, I'm I'm truly saddened to see uh, happen. Probably something he didn't think would happen and something that he's even talked about. But here he is with a guy that's an outspoken black nationalist and supporter of Hillary Clinton. Two men that openly love Francis Chan, who loves Mike Bickle, the proven false prophet. Trip Lee, the partner of deranged Bill Johnson, ecumenical Bill Johnson's Jesus culture, and uh, John Piper, just the same. Uh, The Passion Conference in 2013 had Jesus Culture uh, singing worship music there as well, Uh, Louis Giglio, David Crowder, etc., etc. So, uh, oh yeah, let's not forget John Gray, Trip Lee. Um, This is what Paul Washer has chosen to align himself with. Uh, There's a lot more to be said on this, but these are undeniable, irrefutable facts And I would strongly suggest that rather than being emotional about this, which is the visceral response of most people, they get mad and say, how dare you, how dare you critique a man of God? Well, I'll tell you how I dare. I dare to speak what the Bible says. I dare to let God be true and every man a liar. I dare to show no partiality in judgment. I dare not to show personal favoritism. I dare to esteem the word of God above all else, the only rule of faith and practice. I dare to do that. My question to anybody who challenges that is, how dare you not? How dare you not rebuke what plainly should be rebuked? How dare you continue to support what you know to be clear error? Eli did it. It didn't work out well for him. 1 Samuel 3, 2 John 11, Romans 16, 17, Amos chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Don't be unequally yoked. How many passages of Scripture, 2 Chronicles uh, 19, verse 2, will you uh, help those who hate the Lord and become his enemy? How many passages of Scripture, how much precedent, how much of the tenor of Scripture has to be clearly? This wasn't even debated at a time. It's a testament to the sad state of derelict Christianity that we find ourselves in today. That people who should know better, who've got a lot of theological uh, points of reference under their belt can probably quote by uh, from memory Calvin's doctrines of grace and yet when somebody like John MacArthur or Paul Washer step into error they will bend over backwards to let God be found a liar and those men found true 
They will disregard egregious error, showing gross personal favoritism. Phil Johnson did this. J.D. Hall did this. Todd Friel did this. You're welcome to check out those uh, videos uh, on the channel if you haven't seen those. They will erect double standards to protect their own sphere of influence. This problem is becoming so pervasive, like I said, uh, it's, it is thoroughly disappointing and uh, I would say tragic to, to see somebody like Paul Washer now going headlong into the very things he used to critique. But it seems that the glue holding most of this together is, is incidentally, Calvinist theology. Now, I am not of the Calvinist persuasion, but that's not what I'm upset about. I don't anathematize people because they're Calvinist merely, right? Hyper-Calvinism is a problem. Pelagianism is a problem. I would find myself in a Baxterian camp if I had to use a term. I don't like using terms. That said, that's not my issue. And some people have even brought that, oh, you just hate them because they're Calvinists. That's not what I'm talking about. I told you at the very beginning of this video, Paul Washer is somebody that I used to recommend, considered a brother in the Lord. And I, I don't know what to make of him at this point, but I cannot and will not endorse him at this point. And I could only exhort you to stay away from him at this point until or unless something changes. Paul Washer has the power to rebuke these men for what they're doing, what he should be doing. But he's not. He's not making the sword he wields a terror to evil works. He is partaking with them. He is becoming complicit with them. And Alexander McLaren, one of his own heroes, um, said that very thing. This is not relegated to merely a father-child relationship. It was in Eli's power to restrain them because he had ministerial authority as a priest. Now, he was their father as well. But when it's in your power to restrain evil and you don't do it, you have become an aider and a better of that evil. Second John 11 says the same thing. Not relegated to docetism. Look at God judged Eli for not docetism, but for other defilement. There's a thousand defilements. Leonard Ravenhill once famously said, there's only one way to heaven. There are a million ways to hell. There's a million. There's a thousand disgusting heresies that you can become complicit in propagating by tacit endorsement, which is what Matthew Henry said in his commentary on 2 John 11. There are many ways we can share in the sins of others. 2 Timothy uh, 4. 1 Timothy 5.22, um, I believe it is, says the same thing. Don't uh, partake, don't be a sharer in other people's sins. You can share in somebody else's sin. You can help them. You can aid them when you should be rebuking them. So how dare you not is my question. There's a lot more to be said, uh, but as I want to keep this uh, relatively concise. We're approaching an hour. I'm going to stop it there. There's a, there's a lot to be thought about, but the things that I shared with you are, these are just empirical facts. These are undeniable. Here's who they're with. And lest you want to discredit my interpretation of the Bible, I've appealed to sources that are respected by the people that I'm critiquing. That's why Matthew Henry was quoted. That's why Alexander McLaren was quoted. I quoted Charles Spurgeon quite extensively in the last presentation I made. But Charles Spurgeon uh, echoed these exact same sentiments. He says, uh, for people to stay where their conscience knows they ought not, um, they are doing evil that good might come. He said, it's never your job. Uh, your job is to do right consequences are with God. He said some will see the wisdom in quitting a body altogether when they see that the foundations are can't be repaired. So if you don't want to take my word for it, take Martin Lloyd-Jones' word for it. Take Charles Spurgeon. 
Charles Spurgeon's word for it. Take Alexander McLaren's word for it. Take Matthew Henry's word for it. Because apparently quoting the Bible just isn't good enough anymore. Apparently, reading God's word and rightly dividing it isn't good enough. And that was clearly showcased in the last video done about Phil Johnson and Todd Friel. They made correct assessments when their camp wasn't on the table. They were happy to critique Michael Brown. Uh, but to finish a thought, I don't think I tied up. Tripoli, uh, John Piper, uh, Kevin DeYoung, uh, Tabidi Anabwile, all of these people, uh, I believe, would affirm Reformed theology. They would affirm themselves as Calvinists. And what a sad day when this uh, type of theological agreement wins out over clear, egregious error. Uh, even Charles Spurgeon, the Calvinist, said of John Wesley, the prince of Arminians, that he was one of whom the world was not worthy. He said if there were ever two names that should be added to the list of the twelve, it would be George Whitfield and John Wesley. That's coming from a Calvinist about who, who he described as the prince of Arminians. What a sad day when Calvinistic persuasion is the glue that holds people together, despite the fact that they are sharing in the deeds of devils. Shame on you, Paul Washer. I used to respect you. I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm saddened. And, and I'm starting to move past that into, because like I said, I tried to get a hold of him. And I talked to the people that know him. And I know the people that he affiliates with and associates with. And the fact that Kevin Height of Heart Cry Missionary Society is so closely linked up with J.D. Hall and Phil Johnson and, and uh, Paul Washer spoke at John MacArthur Shepherd's Conference this year and I believe last year. Celebrity, watch out. Watch out. There's a fascinating quote by Charles Spurgeon uh, that I read in the video on J.D. Hall. And to paraphrase, it's a long quote. He basically says that certain men in being faithful to God will garner esteem and respect among the godly. And ever as of late, so, so much a faithful man, what then? The temptation comes to protect the position that he has gained. And he begins to invent ways whereby certain compromises are justified, even commanded. He has, in truth, gone over to the other side. The whole force of his fo former life now tells upon the other side. He has gone over to the enemy. When your position of influence, your power, your sphere, the network of people you're connected with becomes more important to you than God's truth, you are showcasing your idolatry on a silver platter. What a shame. But this is what's happening. It is so pervasive. Like I said, I'm only scratching the surface. But we'll leave it there for now. Uh, stay in your Bibles. The, the days are growing worse in, exponentially, it seems. It seems there's no end to this because somebody has a past pedigree of credibility. They now have carte blanche and do whatever they want. Now John MacArthur can partner with a man who has no official position on Catholicism and another man who um, um, is embracing and endorsing Jesus culture. He is a part of that whole movement, Tripoli. Well, he didn't, you know, he didn't have, he didn't invite Tripoli to his church. What an asinine argument. Is adultery any less adultery when you do it at somebody else's house? You rent a motel and have a hooker there? Is that not adultery? It's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. The location is irrelevant. Substance is what we're talking about, not location. Why was Moses told to take the sandals off his feet? The ground he stood was holy, not because that was a special plot of land, because the presence of God was there. It was the substance. It wasn't that particular bush was special or that plot of land was special. God was special. God was in the presence of that plot of land, and therefore God sanctified that. Does God dwell in temples built with hands now? Is your body not a temple of the Holy Spirit? 
Are you really putting forth the argument that as long as somebody's not invited into their church, you can go embrace them in another church? How stupid. It's, it's, it's almost laughable if so many people weren't saying this. It's so stupid. Uh, much more to be said. Much more to be said. But uh, until next time, stay in the word and um, Godspeed.